It's been 10 months since I've eaten any sugar. I reversed my type 2 diabetes and this is my experience. Although before we get started, I must say that I am not a doctor. I'm not pretending to be a doctor. I'm just a guy who's taken his A1C from 6.5 all the way down to 5.3. So it was July of 2023 when I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And the first thing that I can think of that I can do to improve my situation was to quit eating sugar. And what I did was went completely and entirely cold turkey. It's also important probably to mention here is that not only did I quit sugar, but I quit drinking alcohol and I quit all carbs. And that's what made my experience a lot harder than most of you will probably have to deal with. What exactly does it even mean quitting sugar? Well, no fruits, no honey. I even stopped eating some types of vegetables. So most people quit sugar and do like a 30 day challenge or something like that. But I needed to get well, so not only did I quit sugar, but I also quit everything that converts to sugar, like alcohol and carbohydrates. This is what has made my experience more unique than anything I've ever seen or heard of before. And the hardest thing I must say was trying to find things that didn't have sugar in them. And as soon as I started reading labels and things like that, I noticed even simple condiments like barbecue sauce, ketchup, mayonnaise, mustard, even seasoning salts contain sugar in them. One of the biggest disappointments I had was I grew these beautiful tomatoes in my garden. I fire roasted these things and made myself some roasted tomato soup. And look at the spike that happened to me on this. So when I cooked my homemade tomato soup, what I think happens is that when you cook such things as tomatoes down, it actually brings all of the sugars and kind of makes them almost like a processed sugar when it was used to be in its raw form. Now you've actually made it into this condensed, pretty much almost like processed. I want to share with you guys at the end of this video, one of the biggest game changers that has helped me out reversing my type 2 diabetes and figuring out what spiked me and what didn't. So here's what it felt like when I quit all of these things. Symptoms included headaches, fatigue, night sweats, although I think that was probably due mostly to the alcohol, nausea, lots of irritability, and very interesting, low blood pressure, which I think was attributing towards the dizziness that I was experiencing. On a side note here, I was prescribed from my doctor to be on high blood pressure medications, 100 milligrams of Losartan and 25 milligrams of Antenolol. Dealing with the dizziness, I had to actually cut my medications down because it was getting near towards where I was almost feeling like I was going to faint. Now, interesting enough, I've been on these high blood pressure medications for about 18 years and what I did was eventually get completely off them, but that's another story for another day. As I was going through these really difficult experiences, I started to do some research to figure out what exactly was happening to me and what does it, what can I expect when you stop eating sugar and carbohydrates and things like that? And it's basically called the keto flu. And in a nutshell, what's happening with your body is that it's acclimating to not having all those carbohydrates and not having all of those sugars. And this is the withdrawal of dehydration, headaches, nausea, and things like that that you can expect to experience when you are going through the keto flu. Now, I've quit drinking coffee years ago, and that was pretty difficult, but nothing compared to quitting sugar. Now, I'm six foot four inches. And I also went from 230 to 235, all the way down to 190 pounds. So some good, significant weight loss was experienced during this experiment. Here's what my face used to look like before. And as you guys can see now, it's really trimmed and thinned up a lot. I mean, I look like a beach ball. The one thing I can find that I'm having difficulty even still now is visceral fat. That is the fat inside and your stomach, behind the stomach muscles and around your actual organs. I found that I got a lot more muscle tone being off of sugar. My dentist actually has noticed that I have a lot less plaque on my teeth from not eating carbohydrates and sugars. But let's go back to the experience of the keto flu. Now mine lasted for about a month and a half. And guys, this was very difficult. I'm actually a roofing contractor by trade. So I'm up on roofs working in 100 degree weather, feeling dizzy, feeling nauseous. And I'm basically an animal uh, from what my doctor had told me. I'm not the average American, right? The 
person who works in an office and things like that. And my doctor actually said that, you know, it's very uncommon to find someone like yourself who has taken this on, first of all, so serious. The amount of strenuous labor and calories and always being active is not your normal uh, day-to-day American. I feel fortunate enough to have a job, an occupation that actually keeps me moving. I think that really helped me to lose a lot of the weight and actually to detox a lot faster. Now, the common uh, length of a keto flu is usually around one week to two weeks. So that's what you can expect. But again, a lot of people say that there's these even numbers. They try to compartmentalize everything. But everybody's body is unique and different, and you will probably have a different experience. Cravings. Do I get them? You bet. But one of the things that helped me get through sugar cravings was such things as stevia. Now it comes in a natural form, which is a green powder. This one can be a little bitter if you overdo it, and it gets a little chalky, but it's the closest I could find in its natural form. It also comes in a granulated form. It also even comes in a powdered form. I've even found it in a liquid, which I use for mocktails and drinks and things like that. My favorite so far is actually what is called monk fruit. And it's actually an extract from an actual fruit, whereas stevia comes from a stevia leaf. Monk fruit has a lot better of a flavor to me. The problem is, is it's very difficult to get it to dissolve. You definitely want like a high powered whisk or something like that. One point of interest here is that large soda companies have found interest in purchasing such things as stevia manufacturing. I think they're watching the number of us diabetes grow and grow every year from the from the thousands to the millions, and I think they want to tap into that industry. Now, I personally don't trust these big establishments, so you can do with this information what you will, but I would advise you to be somewhat cautious. And it is probably important to say here too as well that some products, even monk fruit, have additives of other sweeteners, like erythritol. They're actually fermented products that some people say are in an alcohol form and they may not be as digestible and as healthy for you as what you would think. Also interesting to note that some countries have actually banned the use of stevia and other natural sweeteners. Some studies actually suggest too that there's some compromise in the actual gut flora inside your body and in the digestive system. So something to take in consideration before you just jump all in into even natural sweeteners besides artificial sweeteners. One thing I found researching the carnivore diet is that some of these people eat butter chips. They slice butter in little tiny thin pieces, freeze them, and eat that, and that is supposed to help you stave off a sugar craving. It's just very difficult for me to eat just straight up butter, I guess for now at least. I prefer to do everything on a little bit more of a natural form. So one of my main go-tos has been since I started till now is green apples or red apples with almond butter. This satiates the feeling and the cravings for sugars, also gives me some fiber, some proteins. It doesn't really give me a big spike as you guys can see right here. There are also a multitude of other fruits that are good for diabetics, such as strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, and actually some cherries. I've even gone so far as to actually make my own chocolate milk made out of coconut milk, monk fruit powder and cocoa powder. Blend this all together and it actually gives you something that tastes very, very similar to real chocolate milk and is actually pretty refreshing. I've tried Zevia sodas, which aren't really actually that bad. Flavored carbonated waters, lots of teas, like hot teas, mint tea, lemon balm tea, with a little bit of sweetener in it. Nothing like honey or sugar, always monk fruit or stevia. I've even tried non-alcoholic beers. And although the large carbohydrate content did spike my blood sugar, it was actually a nice treat to have, but something I don't wanna do on a regular basis. Sometimes I'd find just a nice cold glass of old fashioned water and lemon juice hits the spot. But actually one of my favorites is a sparkling mineral water with about a half a lime to a whole lime inside. To compensate for all the things that I can't eat that have sugar in them, I've made such things as mocktails, popsicles, even chocolate donuts made out of avocado, believe it or not. My own DIY Nutella. So although all of this has actually helped me to eat some of the foods that I had to quit in the past, 
I try to take them in moderation due to the fact that there's not enough studies and science to prove what these things will do to us long term, especially for our guts. But as far as a blood sugar spike, these are the things that really help me out and I found that they don't actually spike me really at all. So do I still struggle after quitting eating sugar? There are many, many struggles. And what I find fascinating is that food to me has become just like a drug addiction, meaning that once I quit things like donuts and sodas and beer and sugars and things like that, I really feel like a big part of me is missing. A dialogue that I have found in my own mind just as of recently was that I have nothing left in my life to look forward to, meaning that I don't have sugar, I can't eat donuts, I can't drink alcohol, I can't have a birthday cake. And all of these things really I find fascinating because the question I ask myself is, is this what defines me as a person? Alcohol, cake, cookies, a cheeseburger? So I've been slowly learning to replace these things, this, this empty space with other things such as fishing or getting exercise, making videos and things like this, things that I enjoy doing because because these things don't define us. They are just very highly addictive, just like any drugs or alcohol are. And they're widely available and in our face everywhere from the grocery store to billboards, family gatherings, to fast food restaurant chains, dazzling you with the scent as you're driving down the streets. So it's something very difficult, I think, and continues to be. We just need to learn to switch that energy over to something else. And what I've done that something else for me is actually not really boring. If you watch some of my shorts, you will see that I eat such things as bacon wrapped jalapenos with shrimp inside of them, sprinkled with a little bit of cilantro and some non-dairy cream cheese and a squeeze of lime. And it's things like this that shift my attention over from having all of that junk food into really gourmet, wonderful barbecues and things of that nature. I basically eat a lot of big protein meals followed by some real high quality organic fruits such as golden kiwis. And I find some of these things are just as enjoyable as a Snickers bar. When you haven't had sugar for as long as I have, that golden kiwi tastes like heaven. So reading food labels can be very difficult at times. And I'll give you guys a little story I started to eat pork rinds because they don't spike my blood sugar. I replaced those instead of using potato chips. What I used to do is just read the food label, the sugar content in particular, zero sugar. So I open up this bag of jalapeno cheddar pork rinds and I'm munching away at them and they taste relatively sweet. And I said, these are really, really good. But something's gotta be off here. How could they taste so sweet? Even though the nutritional label says zero sugar, reading the ingredients list noted that there was cane sugar. So I don't know how these companies can get away with doing things like this, but I don't feel that it's right. And it's very important for you to not only just read the nutritional label, but also the ingredients. And that's the simplest form that I can give you guys to navigate through not eating sugar and knowing exactly what it is that you're getting. What are some of the things that I really miss? Beer. Nobody loves beer more than me. And although those non-alcoholic beers are really good and I will continue to enjoy them, I will keep them in moderation for sure. The other one is sushi, the white rice in particular and all the sugar that actually goes on it. Now I did do a little cheater where I went for my birthday and actually ate some sushi and it was both delicious and terrifying because I didn't know what kind of sugar spike I was going to get. So eating the sushi, I didn't quite make it an entire year, but I did make it 10 months. It was the first time and last time I have had sugar or carbohydrates since then. Interesting to say, taking a good dollop of apple cider vinegar like I did here, before I ate the sushi actually did not really give me such a high spike but again you guys need to remember that I've reversed my diabetes and I've moved from being insulin resistant to insulin sensitive which is a good thing now what has helped me the most the biggest game changer in my life of quitting sugar and reversing my type 2 diabetes it's called a continuous glucose monitor and this can be a video all in and of itself
I highly suggest that each and every one of you find some way to be able to measure your sugar levels at all times. This is what they look like. Now I've named my blood sugar monitor Mr. BS because Mr. BS never lies. And it just makes things a little funner. They measure your blood sugars in real time, giving you an update every five minutes. Now one thing I have found is that I've become quite obsessive about it, checking it every 15 minutes especially when I eat something new where I don't know how my body's going to react to it. The good news is, is you can find what works for your body and what doesn't. The bad news is, is all the information is always there for you, almost in your face, telling you this is not good for you. So I'm sure that a lot of people are going to want to try to reverse their type 2 diabetes, and I highly recommend that you quit sugar. I highly recommend that you quit drinking alcohol and carbohydrates. But the thing that's going to help you out the most with a continuous glucose monitor is that you are going to watch spikes like this happen. And then you'll see continuous lines like this right here. Although there's so much information, misinformation, and all kinds of people trying to sell people like us, all kinds of things. Guys, I'm not affiliated with, any, with this company. I do have a link in the descriptions where you guys can get a uh, discount on it. But... The end all of misinformation is what you put in your body at the end of the day. And the glucose monitor is going to tell you. And if you need to have some sort of accountability, if you want to get inspired, you will because you will see what is happening with you. This in my book is what's going to help you keep you on track and live a much better and healthier life. And hopefully either reduce your diabetes effects on your body or actually completely reverse it like I did. Now the big question probably is, is will I ever go back to eating sugar? And the answer is no. If I was put in a life death situation where someone told me you need to either say drink alcohol or eat sugar and knowing that I had the option to quit either one of those, I would take alcohol any day. The amount of struggle, of pain, nausea, and all of the things that I explained in this video, I never want to go through ever again. As far as self-accountability, as far as self-awareness, these are things that keep me from reaching over and grabbing that donut or grabbing that soda or eating that ice cream, possibly ever again, or maybe just in moderation. I haven't made my mind up yet, but I'm pretty stuck on not having them ever again. I hope you guys like this video. I hope that it helps you out. If you do, Guys, there's a free ebook that I've written. I'll put the link to the descriptions below. Like, subscribe, comment, help this channel out to get to where it needs to be so we can help other people. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Here's to your health.